Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now I have made no secret of the fact that I'm a little bit in love with Dr Frost and his wonderful maths resources and it's been a while since we've featured one of these um, on TES. Well, I did a collection of his resources ages ago but I was just planning a lesson on CERDs myself and I came across this one and I just thought I need to share this because I tell you now, if you haven't heard of Dr. Frost resources or used them, make sure you sat down because it's going to knock you off your feet. There's, and even if you have used it, hopefully you'll find something useful in this video, if not just a reminder of just how quality his resources are. So uh, what do they look like? They are just a PowerPoint. So just download the PowerPoint and it looks a little bit like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make this uh, full screen mode so hopefully you can still see that just so I can flick through it because it's quite an interactive PowerPoint. Now I'm gonna say at the start here that very, very, very rarely would I use one of Dr. Frosty's PowerPoints exactly as they are. And I'll explain why as I kind of talk through this. So just be bearing in mind, the whole beauty of a PowerPoint is you can take individual slides out, build them into your own things, delete aspects, add aspects and so on. It's got to be right for your teaching style and more importantly, the needs of your students. Anyway, so what's Frosty do? Now, CERDs are one of those topics that I absolutely love but it's hard for kids to get a bit of a grasp of what they're about. And what I love about this is Frosty, he goes straight into the kind of history behind it and, and the different types of numbers. And there's a lovely little matching activity about where do thirds fit into the integers, rationals and irrationals and so on. And again, you can leave this out and so on, but like, it's just, it's just nice for the kids to just get a bit of a sense of what's going on with this kind of stuff. I just think it's absolutely lovely. Um, <laughs> So once we've got that, a little bit of class voting, which of these is a CERD, which isn't a CERD, and so on. And then, therefore, what's your definition of a CERD? And I love that. It's not saying to the kids, this is a CERD, write this rule down. It's all right, if that's a CERD and that's not a CERD, and that's a CERD and that's not a CERD, what's your definition of one? And so on. Lovely, lovely. And then we get onto the rules of CERDs, very simple. Now, if you haven't used Frosty before, um, you won't be familiar with these green boxes. Basically, they're just a little bit of simple animation and it just means that you can hide and reveal things really nicely throughout it. And that's gonna really come into play in, in a minute or so. So then we have a nice simple worked example, simplifying CERDs. And again, it's just nice. You can just reveal the answers, give you so much control and flexibility. And um, little test your understanding. And again, you can reveal them in any order and so on. And notice a nice little progression of difficulty there. We've got that little number on the outside and so on. Um, little multiplying thirds. Frosty loves this. He loves a bro tip, a little bit of advice for, for his students there. A bit more test your understanding and so on. Maybe you're not going to use all these questions. But this is, oh, I just flipping love this, this kind of page. It's just ideal because... Maybe you don't want to get the textbooks out. Maybe that's going to be a hassle. Maybe you don't want to give the kids a worksheet because you're trying to save them photocopying and so on. Maybe you don't want all the kids to do all the all the same questions. Just bang one of these sheets on the board. Just bang it up there and say to the kids, what I often do is try 1A um, and 1B. Uh, sorry, try A and B from each question. If you find those all right, try E from each question and then move on. If you don't, then try C and D and so on. And it's just ideal because it means at any stage in the lesson, I can just reveal an answer. And Frosty always has a really nice progression throughout it. So basics, and then by the time we get to question six, A's, B's, and K's are floating around. Lovely stuff. Anyway, I'll speed on. Uh, we get onto adding thirds, uh, multiplying thirds, little questions in context, which are coming up time and time again in the GCSE. Again, a beautiful worksheet with some nice little area-based questions there and a little bit of a link to Pythagoras. Again, nice bit of revealing answers. And then we get on to rationalizing the, denom excuse me, rationalizing the denominator and so on. Lovely questions. And then this is what I really like. Okay, so you, then we get some nice exam style questions and he always produces something special. So this particular one from Further Maths um, exam, the wonderful AQA level two certificate, some more uh, exercises and questions. And then if you ever see this symbol, the skull and crossbones, you know you're in for trouble. And by you, I mean I mean me, because these are flipping hard. You get that kind of the, he digs out the ultimate limit, the, the ultimate test of your understanding of, of those questions. And that's it. And I just think if you're putting together a surge lesson, what more do you need? And as I say, I would never use the lesson um, all the way through. 
Also, a little tip for you. Um, I interviewed uh, Dr. Frost from my, from my Mr. Barton Maths podcast, and I, I told the story about when I used one of his lessons with my year eights um, on straight line graphs, and the confidence was pretty low, and I put up one of his questions, and I hadn't checked it myself, and they were like, what is that, sir? Because like sometimes the difficulty is really sky high. So really check through each of his questions, check they're appropriate, delete any slides, delete any questions that aren't, add your own space for your own animations or whatever, your own uh, notes in there. And just using Frosty as a kind of basis to your lesson, I just think it's a really, really, really solid start. So there you go, wonderful stuff. Um, his lessons are on pretty much every topic, they're all on tests, so use them. And perhaps more importantly as well, if you do use them, just share a little uh, word of thanks uh, for him kind of putting all those resources on there. Anyway, hope you found that useful and I'll return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.